Guys, I think we might have a fire down range. What's up everybody, welcome back to the VSO Gun Channel. As you guys can see, I'm wearing armor today. It's been a long time since I've done any armor testing. I'm getting a feel for these new plates that I've got in. These are from Caliber Armor. I'm wearing front and back level three rifle plates. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's a little bit different than what we're used to seeing as far as plates are concerned. It's got this really shiny finish on it that is actually making me feel a little bit bad about blowing some of these up here today, but for science. What makes this thing different than a lot of other steel armor out there on the market is this is AR-550. A lot of manufacturers will stray away from AR-550 because it can get brittle. And usually what makes it brittle is the curvatures that are put in it. You can see that this is a multi-curve plate and they have prevented this plate from becoming brittle, or at least they claim to have made this less than brittle. And we're gonna find out here today, but they're endeavoring to accomplish this by putting all those curves in with only a single press, thus mitigating that paper clip effect. That is what makes all steels for that matter more brittle, the more times they're pressed, the more brittle they become. So they've done this with a single press and we're gonna see if that has any difference. This is not the dedicated carrier for this thing. As you can see, it's uh, not exactly fit to scale, but they are working on tailoring one specifically for their plates. This was just here for demonstration purposes. On to the coating. We can see that the coating, again, is this very shiny uh, material that is on here. This is an anti-spall coating. It is a proprietary anti-spall coating. I am told that the gentleman that is uh, in charge of this product line is actually a polymer scientist, which hats off to you, sir, uh, from one scientist to another uh, chemist. But uh, we're gonna see how the spall does today as well uh, through a battery of tests. And because we have a lot to do, we're just gonna go ahead and get to it. First up is our ballistic ladder. And what we're gonna be doing is basically starting at the bottom, work our way up. We're gonna go up to 308 today because I don't have a 30 odd six. I don't really dabble in FUD calibers. So 556 five, NATO. We're gonna be shooting Fioki 223A. It's basically an FMJ round. And we're gonna be shooting it out of a full length AR-15. This is a MI-15F 16 inch barrel. One round. plate didn't even move you can see kind of the deformation here where the round went in right there and then there's like a piece of material there that's kind of trying to poop out of the spall coat and this is pretty much the affected area and a little bit warm right there but no bulge or anything like that moving up to 762 by 39 I've got one round of FMJ Fiocchi in there. And for our host today, we're gonna to be using the White Russian. If you guys missed the full video on this, then I'll have it linked in the description box down below. This is a fun gun. So here we go. A Little bit more energy. As you can see, we got some more movement over there on that plate. Although unfortunately, I just realized that I got ahead of myself and I forgot to arm the high speed. So we're gonna to have to go without that shot, sorry guys. I wouldn't do that to you guys. Of course, we're gonna shoot it on the uh, high speed. Here we go, we're gonna put it on the other side of the plate though. First 7.62 by 39 shot, and down here was our second one. As you can see, there's very little uh, indicator, and there's not really any bulge here, not really any bulge there either, maybe a little bit. And you can see a little fragment there that's trying to peek out of that, uh, that coating. But you can see because I hit it low here, we've gotten some separation of the anti-spall coat. This time we're gonna be stepping up to 308, just using some M80 ball, some Milserp stuff, FMJ. And what we're gonna be using for our host is the Century C308, and this one's the one with the Midwest Industries rail on it that I retrofitted. So here we go. Looks like I got it. Let's go take a look. Destroyed that section of the anti-spall coat uh, there. Let's see. I don't feel any back face deformation here at all. Yeah, none. So I'm kind of interested to see what happens. This may turn into today's daily conditioning session because I may have to do some wind sprints too. 
set that plate back up a whole bunch of times. But I've got five rounds of 308. We're just gonna wail on that plate and see what happens. Got it. We've separated the anti-spall coat. You guys see that? It went flying off. That was freaking cool, man. Plate one. And this steel looks pristine. Like we could keep doing this pretty much indefinitely, I would think. But this, there's nothing wrong with this plate other than the anti-spall is, is cut off. Uh, this thing could continue to work, but we're gonna move on to another test. But before we do, I wanna show you guys what we do for you. And you can see uh, that's gonna need replaced. So if you feel so inclined, you can help us out by contributing on Patreon or Subscribestar if you don't wanna deal with uh, Patreon's anti-freedom stance. Condor carrier, you can see. So we don't need that anymore. As you can see, it's brand new. And a fresh plate from Caliber. We're just gonna go ahead and put that guy up inside there. So the idea here, guys, is that the armor is encased in a layer of cardboard, and as the anti-spall coat is defeated, it will damage the cardboard. We're gonna continue this section with the white Russian, but this time we're gonna swap it out to some bimetal steel cased stuff. So somewhere between six and nine rounds, we can see that we started to get some spall to come through on the side here. One piece out the top here as well. Nothing over on this side, and I think that's because that group was justified over here a little bit. We can see a little bit of damage here to the, to the carrier itself. So between six and nine rounds of 762 by 39 is where you're gonna start to see delamination of your anti-spall coat. So uh, yeah, hopefully, between six and nine rounds, you find somewhere else to be. Charging this vest up for the last time. I've got an absurd test for you. You guys will recognize this as our ballistic advantage machine gun. Full video in the description box down below if you guys missed it. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smoke that plate until it fails or until we run out of ammunition. How that's gonna work is there's three ways I can think about this. Either it's going to shred the whole apparatus and it's gonna fall and it can't hold it up anymore. We'll call the test quits then. We'll run out of ammunition or the plate will fail. Well, stop yakking. Shut up and shoot, right? One magazine down. Looks like it's still up there. Guys, I think we might have a fire down range. It's still up there though. All right, last magazine, here we go. All right, we're gonna let the lead clear out down there a little bit and uh, that thing's still hanging, guys. That is ridiculous. <laughs> that thing's toast, I'm gonna need to wash my hands. Yeah, so we had a lot of rounds here and here. Nothing through the armor, guys. So, of course, I didn't get every single round on the, on the steel, but you can see that we got a fair amount of them on and no failure on the plate. So, guys, this thing will take more than you can uh, as far as armor capability is concerned. I, I don't know guys, what do you think? Send that out to Patreon? I don't think so. <clears throat> I think we're just gonna call that one done. Alrighty guys and gals, we're actually gonna break it off there for today's video. We have some more testing to do on Caliber's soft armor, but I just thought that this was a natural breaking point where we can just go ahead and cut it off here, do the hard armor in one video, 
do the soft armor in another video. Otherwise, the video would be like 25 minutes long and YouTube attention spans and such. To see if it pinches or pokes you anywhere that, you know, because it is a multi-curve plate. I it's got not... curves. Shorty got curves. I also wanted to kind of rehash this a little bit if it didn't come across in video, but the reason you would want an AR-550 piece of armor over, say, an AR-500 piece of armor is that AR-500 armor is just not going to be able to handle the kind of stresses that you guys saw in this video. So it's not going to be able to do that machine gun test and come off uh, completely flawless like it did. Like, there's just no way that after a few shots, a an AR-500 piece of armor would be, have been cooked through, especially at that kind of distance with 5.56. That said, in layman's terms, you get a little bit more structural integrity, a little bit more rugged ability out of something made of 550 instead of something made out of standard 500. And if you guys are interested in more information or picking something up from Caliber Armor, if you go over to the affiliates page, link in the description box down below, there'll be a discount code listed for Caliber Armor. Take advantage of it if you guys are in the market. Thanks for joining us here today on the VSO Gun Channel. Hopefully we'll see you guys on a future video. And you are live. Just like to point out, this Desert Eagle is like the world's biggest gun with the world's smallest mag release button. <laughs> Whatevs. Do your worst. <laughs>